Return of the King is the longest book and the longest movie in the trilogy. It's four and a half hours long, so it's the kind of movie you only watch once every month. But let's say you can't watch it right now because you have life-threatening surgery in 20 minutes. Don't worry mate, I got this! Pretty sick while I'm recording this guy, so this might sound weird. This is a follow-up to my garbage retrospective. You can still watch it as a standalone video, if you for some reason hate the previous three books. Although maybe, consider psychiatric hospitalization. Also, while I was away on vacation, I thought this is an excellent time to finally read The Silmarillion. Obviously I didn't. But what an excellent time that was. Return of the- wait, that doesn't make any sense, he's crowned at the end, the title should be The Brand New King. The movie starts with Smeagol fishing with his cousin. They fail to catch anything and go home. Dum dum. Her, 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 her. His cousin finds a ring. Smeagol says, give it to me as a birthday present. The cousin reminds him that he got him a USB stick which is a terrible birthday present, so Smeagol kills him, then gets thrown out of society. They blame the Sobrin side, but the real reason is because he has a weird voice. So he moved to a cave and became a makeup artist, uh, and then like real life was promptly replaced by CGI. Currently for Hobbit Team 1, Frodo has been kidnapped, wait no. Wow, they are way further ahead in the book. The movie has them chilling in some ruins, then at night, Gollum talks loudly about strangling them to death. Sam disagrees with this, but Frodo tells him not to kink shame. And the seeds of divide have been planted. The other points of view finally meet up in the newly opened Isengard water park. Time to question Sauron. Sauron! The Odin King. Let's discuss peace, let's return to status quo. Fuck off, cunt! Rude. What do you want then, Gandalf? Uh, I don't know. I just got here. What you got? Sauron shows him the Palantir. The Palantiri are walkie-talkies. That's it. These books were written in the 40s when walkie-talkies were still considered Motorola devil magic. Sauron's staff runs out of durability. The king tries to convince Wormtongue to betray his master, while Gandalf tries to convince Sauron to give him information. They both agree and cancel each other out. That was a massive failure, so they decided to cut it out of the movie. In the book, however... Hey, Sauron, stay in there and don't do anything evil from now on. Okay, I will not. And then they leave for the Helm's Deep after party. Rowan. It's a barber shop. At night, Pippin grabs the Palantir and calls up the Dark Lord. You are on with Sauron. What's that supposed to mean? Is this a prank call? I'll find you! While trying to call the number back, Sauron accidentally sends a picture of his next target. Gandalf tells the rest of the crew that his new target is Minas Tirith, and they're all like, yeah, we know it's like literally the only place he can attack. Sauron takes prank calls extremely seriously, so Pippin has to join Gandalf in traveling to Gondor and talk to the steward of Gondor. Meanwhile, random elves are out on a stroll in a forest, and the mother flipping Rhyme Nazareth tells Aerosmith Jr. she's expecting an Aerosmith Jr. Jr., so she runs to her father. Manfil! Reforge the sword, or I'll feed ya to me Karagors! So Elrond does that. Side note, I thought this was the only Academy Award winner in this movie. Then I remember Kate Blanchett ruins everything in this short scene. That would have been such a great movie trivia. Gandalf and Pippin reach Minas Tirith. You might think it's mighty, but it's only a model. Pippin, don't say anything because he knows nothing. Hey, Stuart! My only son is dead, Aragorn is trying to usurp me, and a 50-year-old named Frodo has the Ring of Power! How did you? Illegal Palantir wiretapping! Pippin volunteers to join Gondor and the steward says yes immediately, because he knows everything, so he knows that Pippin has killed a cave troll, defeated a powerful wizard, and once ate 20 portions of bread. He should probably run this place. Gandalf says the title. Good job. Gondor is going through a bad time. They decide to build a city in front of a loud dark volcano so no one is buying real estate. And the economy is in the shits. 
They tried to solve this by planting one plant, but it's not blooming because they don't have a king. That doesn't make any sense. The truth is hiring a professional gardener is too expensive to take care of just one tree. It's a noble lie. Team Frodo sees the city from Shadow of War, and Frodo is drawn in by the loot box system. Uh, then a nuclear accident happens inside the city, so they have to evacuate. Mordor Politburo trying to cover this up would make an excellent miniseries. Gang Frodo continues to walk up a path that's not wheelchair accessible, or knowing how brutal the orcish world is, maybe it is. While they are climbing, Gollum comments, Hey, you know how I've been calling the ring my precious and tried to kill you before? Sam is probably worse than me. Makes sense, thinks Frodo. Then Sam stupidly says, Hey Frodo, do you need any help carrying that thing? And what Frodo hears is, I'm gonna gacha and throw you off this cliff like I did with Gandalf. Yes, it was, it was me, I'm a fire monster. Then later at night, or day, pretty hard to tell in these parts, Gollum frames Sam. Frodo immediately believes Sam ate the bread. We all know why he thinks he did it. But doesn't say it, because the ring hasn't made him rude. Gandalf knows a giant battle is coming, otherwise it wouldn't make any sense story-wise. So they need to contact Rohan. And they can only do that with Pyres, because they haven't invented the Windows phone. They did it! This scene is so fantastic, but... Why was there no failsafe? Imagine having to move an entire army because some drunk guy tripped with a torch. Gondor is calling for aid. This better not be a prank pyre. Rohan moves. Looks cool, but a lot of horses had problems getting employment after this movie. They set up camp in front of a rectangle hole in a mountain that plays spooky sound effects whenever you look at it. According to the Silmarillion, there's actually a guy named Mick around the corner making these sounds. At night a mysterious stranger shows up to the camp. Aragorn, I've reforged the sword. Yes, you did that in the first book, I got it right here. What the? A glitch in the matrix. This sword proves that Aragorn is a descendant of the Numenumane, a Dimadome, and the rightful king of Gondor. Elrond is like, you are outnumbered 40 to 1, and when you have a problem, who are you gonna call? Uh, Ghostbusters? No, j just ghost. That doesn't make any s See at the wedding! Meanwhile, in Osgilia, Wow, it sure is great that we are completely protected if they attack from the north. Ah, when did the orc learn marine engineering? This is unfair. Ah, they have leather dragons. This is super unfair. Faramir almost dies, but he returns to Minas Tirith. Father. Faramir, I need you to go on a suicide mission. I can't do that. Your brother went on a suicide mission. First thing he did in the first book. God damn it. Uh, then he asks Pippin if he knows any songs and he starts singing Pretty Fly for a white guy. Personally, I'm rooting for him. I think he's gonna pull this up. Ah, that was fast. Ah, my first son's brother is dead. And then the steward goes mad, just as the orcs arrive. How very inconvenient. Team heroin addicts have made it to a cave to Mordor. There is spider web everywhere. Obviously from small spiders, because giant spiders would have giant web. But Frodo starts to run, because all spiders are scary and you know it. But he falls over, and that's when he sees Shlub, who is a total milf. This is Tolkien's real vision, shut up. It makes sense. It makes sense if you've read the Dermodillion! Uh, then he kills Gollum. Sam discovers he's been set up. Which he already knew. You didn't have to go all the way down. Back in Gondor, they are slowly realizing they should have made rounder boulders. And the orcs are slowly realizing they should have put their catapults way further back. Terrible planning on both sides. Team two and a half men are having a spooky time. Hello, I am the only ghost with lungs, therefore I am king. Before you say anything, we've been here for 3000 years. We've heard all the ghost puns, don't even try. Wanna protect Gondor for me? Sure. Boo? Yeah. You're a dead man. 
Someone had to collect all these skulls and put them in a pool or something. Then the king comes out and apologizes because he realizes he also made a pun with when he said dead men. It's just hard to be around dead people. Then they hijack some boats. Not shown how. Can they walk on water or stay on the... In the White City, the orcs are shooting fireballs against the Tirith. Not super effective against a stone city, but it's visually appealing and it inspires the steward to set fire to his son. Wait! Wait, Stuart, he's alive! But he's not Boromir! Pippin runs out to find Gandalf. Takes him all night. The two quickly ride two blocks. Oh shit! Dark Souls fight! Gandalf, we win. Gondor is lost. Unless... Unless... Unless the most epic moment in film history were to happen right now. Nah, see, didn't... The Ro Ro him arrives. Oh shit guys, it's happening. It's happening. Are you ready? Are you ready? I've decided to cut it out. To remind you all that we are not friends. The orcs have been defeated. Yay. Oh no, the elephant Maori show up to fight the horse Scandinavians. That's not how you fight elephants. Did you not bring mice? The steward is covering himself in lighter fluid. It's also splashing on Faramir, but he's so tired he doesn't even care. Gandalf storms in. Steward, stop. You are right, Gandalf. Ah, fuck, I dropped it. Faramir's death wouldn't be badass enough, so Pippin saves him. The steward realizes his son is alive, and this is gonna be such an awkward conversation. He, he should just let the fire consume him. In the mountains, Frodo has fallen asleep in his spider sleeping bag. And he's such a heavy sleeper, he doesn't wake up when Sam steals the ring to use it for evil deeds. Then orcs show up to take him. Urukais would have questioned why there's a random child here, but the orcs are like, fuck it, why not? Let's see how the elephant fight is going. Ah, the king over horses is ironically under a horse. The witch king then goes in for a kill, but Eowyn shows up. I will kill you if you touch him. I wasn't, my fell beast was. So she cuts off his head and after such a baller move, she's like, I'm gonna fantasy roast this fucker. So she's all, be gone, foul dwimmer lake, lord of carrion. Oof. I bet that even though his skin is completely destroyed, you can still see those burn marks. The witch king is like, okay, rude, but I don't care. No living man may hinder me. Then she goes in for the critical strike. But no living man I am. You look at upon a woman. And he's like, yeah, I know. I was trying to be supportive. I'm the king of witches. I try to support women. Oh, and then, you know, with her grandpa kink, uh, they get married. True story. Don't you dare to argue. I bet you thought this wasn't even in the book. Okay, but how did he cut the influence of Sauron? Well... He could have used today's sponsor, NordVPN. Let's say a Dark Lord is using a powerful ring to influence your computer. You can protect yourself using NordVPN's military-grade encryption. Switch to a server in 61 plus countries, including Belgium. No Dark Lord would ever expect you to be in Belgium. Could he have used the link in the top of the description and used code Killian Experience for 75% off a 3 year plan? Probably not, he's a fictional character, but you can click the link in the top of the description. NordVPN. This ad was supposed to be in the travel guide, but it arrived precisely when it meant to. Precisely like the reinforcements for Rohan, because now three ships are here. But there's only three people on them, so how do they drive? I'm so confused. Explain this to me, oligophants. Piss off, ghost! Hmm, that does make sense. We did it. We defeated the army. Wait, there's seriously an entire chapter of Aragorn just healing people. Eru, damn it, Tolkien. The Uruks and Orcs start to fight right as Sam sneaks in. This might seem very lucky, but no, it happens like every 10 minutes. Then this gardener defeats three fully armed soldiers bred for war. Mr. Frodo, I have the ring. Sam, give it to me. And don't say let's make a pro and cons list. Damn it, how did he know? Sauron is probably looking for them 24-7. Not much else he can do, can't really read a book at that size. So the others decide to distract him by making a prank call. Behold, Dark Lord. Oh, you, you got a sword. Okay, okay. Um, I'm killing your fiance. Yeah, don't bring a sword to a killing elf fight, bitch. That power move caused all humans to march to Mordor. 
Let the Lord of the Black Land come forth! Dark Lord Aragorn is outside. He's here. He can't do that. You want me to ask why? Yes, you are supposed to be my mouth. Go, 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 go. I am taking the Mithril shirt. No! We we're gonna sell that and buy sushi. Hello, guys. You, uncanny CGI. Oh, you know what's really uncanny? Killing Elijah Wood. Then why didn't you bring his corpse instead of his shirt? Ah, uh, excuse me. Dark Lord, that could have gone better. Ah, uh, just surround them. But don't place the orcs on the ground that collapses in case I die. Ground collapse, okay. Some of Frodo are disguised as orcs. They need to get away from them to get into the volcano. In the books, the orcs just start to randomly fight. Like I said, happens every 10 minutes. Uh, the animated movie has a race war. Real shit. Sam is like, we need to get to the volcano, but Frodo has been in constant pain and hasn't slept since he was with that milf. So Sam carries him. Sam, you beautiful allegory for a British farm boy leaving for World War One. There's a gate! Good thing Sauron didn't cement that entrance shut. They made it. All Frodo has to do now is to cast it into the fire. Any second now. Oh no, he's turning around. Let's make a pro and cons list. No, it's over. Unless... Gollum survived the fall, snuck past all the guards, and bites off his finger. Nah, that's impossible. A more likely scenario. Ah, Sam, the heat from the volcano has made my hand all slippery. Ah, the ring fell into the volcano. Oh well, it was only a movie prop. Oh, ironic how Mount Doom would be my doom. This might seem incredibly lucky. No! If you pay attention, you notice that all the main characters are on this side. It was written this way. Sam and Frodo did it. They can finally take their nap. And that's how the movie ends. No, the eagles show up. Why didn't they just fly the eagles there? What do you mean? Haven't you been paying attention? Hey eagles, let's carry the hobbit to Mordor. Or, hey, we could peck his head off and take the ring for ourselves. Yes! Welcome to the hotel pecking heads off! Frodo wakes up and sees Gandalf, realizes he's definitely dead. Now comes the Lord of the Rings billion endings that some people complained about. Personally, I didn't think it had enough endings, you foul dimmer lake. Ending 1, they die. Ending 2, Frodo wakes up and they are reunited. Ending 3, Aragorn gets married to his boyfriend. What a twist, but it makes sense if you were paying attention. Uh, then he says to the hobbits, You bow to no one. Cause you're so short, you manlet, and everyone laughs. Aragorn is crowned king of Gondor. And then he's like, no, I, I don't want it. So they ask the mouth of Sauron, hey, who should be king? And he's like, ah, need a good, need a good story. So they make the fucking crystal ball. Ending four, the hobbit returned to the Shire and it's on fire. Scouring of the Shire was cut from the movie. Sauron did not stay in Isengard. He took over the entire Shire with 100 people. Frodo pretty much shows up and says, they are 100 people? And the hobbits butcher them like cattle. Then Sam gets married. Ending 5, Kate ruins like the best trivia ever. All magical beings are going on a boat and Frodo tells Sam, I am going with the elves to find a new ringsmith because I need that ring back at the end. A fantastic movie, a bit short. Huh, I completely forgot to tell everyone where all these films were filmed. And that is the Killian experience. This video was delayed after delayed, but the next video is gonna be a travel guide, but it's gonna be different from the last one. It's gonna be more like a story time video, I guess. I hope you'll enjoy it.